The last season of she came out in May 2020, and at the time, I made a video about how incredibly good it was. To me, it was the perfect final season that wrapped everything up in a way that went beyond my wildest expectations. A little over a year later, looking back on she as a whole, it's phenomenal as a series that just exists now as five solid seasons. I'm ecstatic that this show is just going to live on Netflix now, a masterpiece of storytelling and an inspiring story of queer love that is legitimately going to help so many people people see themselves represented in a way that they haven't before. This is just such a good story told with so much care, so much thoughtfulness, and I can't stop rewatching it. So today, I just wanted to talk about some of the things that I love the most about she and that have stuck with me over the last year. Let's start with episode three of the last season, Corridors. This is one of my favorite episodes because of the interaction between Katra and Glimmer, two characters who haven't interacted much aside from occasionally fighting each other. Katra obviously views Glimmer and Bo with a level of jealousy because of their friendships with Adora, even if she won't admit it. But Glimmer is a new person in season 5, changed by the death of her mother and the responsibility of being queen. Seeing these two forced to spend time together after everything they've both gone through is a really unique character moment for both of them. Katra has the time to slow down, to think about what she wants and who she wants to be. Glimmer reflects on the mistakes she's made and the people she's hurt, and I think she realizes that she has more in common with Katra than she'd like to admit. This episode only has a bit of fighting at the end, and Bo and Trapta and Adora mostly just have a comedic time fixing the ship for the B-plot. Most of the episode is just about these characters and their relationship and their motivations. It's meaningful and emotional in a way that I think most people wouldn't expect. And it all culminates in Katra having this revelation. She wants to do something good. She maybe wants to be good. But at the same time, she doesn't believe in herself. She doesn't believe she's worth saving. She doesn't think she deserves the things that she wants. So she basically sacrifices herself to save Glenn. And that theme of sacrificing yourself, of martyrdom, comes up again in a big way with Adora later, which we'll talk about. But for the icing on the cake of this Corridors episode, I love how the goofy fixing the ship thing actually feeds into the emotional stakes with Glimmer at the end. I think that's really talented writing, because Bo the entire time is basically babysitting Adora and Entrapta, who, in their own hilarious ways, are in danger of damaging the ship. It's funny, it displays their personalities, it's a tonal shift from the more emotional talks Glimmer and Catcher are having, but at the end, when Glimmer is teleported into the vacuum of space, Bo changes his tune instantly. He's now okay with Entrapta messing around with the ship in any way she wants because he's willing to take that risk to save Glimmer. He was terrified by Entrapta using a rope to do a spacewalk earlier, but when Glimmer is in space, he picks up the rope and throws himself after her. I just thought that was really sweet and I love how it all got tied together at the end. she is just so good at doing that in so many of its episodes. And also, little side note, I just love their space suits. Because he normally wears a crop top, Bo gets a little tough window, which is just amazing, and Adora has her ponytail stick out of her helmet because of course she does. Just fantastic design. Anyway, let's continue with the Catradora storyline into episode 5 of the last season, Save the Cat. This episode sees Adora come to save Catra, even though Catra truly believed she wouldn't. Their fight and having Horde Prime control Catra was, I think, a really good writing choice because Adora and Catra have fought so many times, but this fight is so distinctly different. Catra is being controlled, not fighting the same, and Adora is refusing to fight back. Catra is just able to claw away at her. I really like the detail of the prime controlled Catra saying hello Adora instead of her usual hey Adora. And at the end of the fight, when Catra falls off the platform, I love this little pause from Adora. She looks down at the pit that Catra has fallen into, she steals herself for a second, and she chooses to jump after her. I love that. It wasn't an instinctual reaction. She didn't fall in while running after Catra. She wasn't dragged in by Catra. She stopped and made an active choice that she had to save Katra no matter what. And that leads into her transforming back into she which plays into how emotions drive everything in the show. She couldn't brute force her way back into being she as much as she wanted to, and it took love for her to really be able to do it. But at the same time, Adora was reckless to jump down after Katra, and Katra still doesn't believe she was worth saving. These two, despite having gone through all of this growth and change, aren't fully there yet. I'm amazed at how she is able to have these big emotional moments that are such big changes for the characters, and yet it saves the biggest change, the biggest challenge, for the finale. The thing that all those past emotional moments were leading up to. Because in the end, it's not a fight that saves the world or the defeat of the bad guy or anything. It's Katra and Adora loving each other, and in doing so, moving past their biggest flaws. Katra has been unable to show Adora her true feelings, to be vulnerable and to ask for what she needs. But at the most pivotal moment, she says the now iconic one-word line, stay. 
way. She expresses what she needs and she has to believe in her own worth to do that. She believes that she is worth staying for, and so she asks Adora to stay. The growth that she has to go through to get to that point is monumental, and it's a kind of insecurity that so many people grapple with. On the flip side, Adora's choice at the end is a massive subversion of the whole chosen one trope. In so many of these types of stories, the inspirational leader is supposed to be a martyr, to be willing to sacrifice themselves to save everyone else. So many chosen one characters have to accept that their fate is to walk to their doom alone. That's supposed to be moving and aspirational and courageous, but it can be harmful to portray that as the way to lead, to say that strength comes from never tending to your own needs. Shira flips that on its head because Adora is ready to sacrifice herself from day one. She's accepted her role as a hero and isn't afraid to sacrifice herself to save others. In Heart Part 1, which is the second to last episode, Adora does the typical hero thing. She goes down the dangerous path alone so she doesn't hurt her friends. And she's confronted by Mara, the previous Shira, who explains that she didn't want to die. She sacrificed herself so that the next Shira wouldn't have to. Mara was the hero and it didn't solve everything. She wants Adora to be different. She says this incredibly powerful line to Adora, you're worth more than what you can give to other people. You deserve love too. That's something not just Adora, but lots of people watching this show need to hear. Because being the hero isn't just a thing in stories. It's super common for people to judge themselves based on what they can do for others, forgetting that they also have needs and deserve to be loved. The show really drives home the point with this Mara scene that caring for others at the expense of yourself isn't the noble, selfless thing that it's hyped up to be. At the end of the day, what Adora really needs to do is be the opposite of the self-destructive hero. She can't sacrifice herself. She has to stay. She can't carry the weight of the world on her shoulders and solve all the problems herself. She needs love and support. And that's how we get this historic, sapphic kiss to save the world. Having both characters reach this final moment of growth at the same time, and having their doing so be the thing that saves the world, that's such talented writing. And I love the focus on what the characters will do after. Whether it's Catra and Glimmer chatting about what they'd be doing on Etheria, or Mara asking Adora to think about her own needs. The show drives home that this story isn't just about the conflict, but about what comes next. What it would be like to recover and rebuild. And then, at the end, we get this beautiful, heartwarming scene of the best friend squad all together. I would describe this as a medicine. Healing queer hearts around the world who've been hurt by the persistence of the barrier gaze trope. After so many years of seeing queer characters killed off or given tragic endings, we get this hopeful, joyful ending that is so, so heartwarming. The story of Katra and Adora is not something that could have been done even just like a few years ago. I mean, when She-Ra first got started in 2018, it wasn't even guaranteed that they were going to be able to fully tell the story that they wanted to tell. When Korra and Asami from The Legend of Korra became canon at the end of 2014, that was both a massive moment for queer representation and kind of a small step forward because they weren't even allowed to kiss on screen. But fast forward to 2020 and suddenly we've got this epic tale of queer love that's so important and also just a part of an overall really strong story with other interesting characters and fascinating themes. We went from 0 to 100 really quick and we have the creators of She-Ra to thank for that. So huge thank you to everyone who poured themselves into this show because it's really a work of art. We are so lucky to have something this good. A year later, I still love this show and I think it's going to stick around in the public consciousness for a long long, long time. Let me know in the comments how you're feeling about she one year later. How many times have you rewatched it? Be honest. Anyway, I'm Riley. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I hope you're doing well. I'll see you next time.